there's this issue now this year, everyone remembers in June, probably that the Cambridge University is saying for the ASNAC course, Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic studies. Uh, it's a good course, some great people taking it and learning a lot from it. But they're now saying that they don't really want people to think that there's any such thing as Anglo-Saxons. And the idea that there's no such thing as Anglo-Saxons actually is older now than the, the ban Anglo-Saxon as a word. So banning Anglo-Saxon as a word within academia goes back to 2019. Uh, and it starts off with like the main three people, uh, Ra Mary Ramburn Olm, uh, Dorothy Kim and Eric Wade. But there are other people, but these people will know each other personally and they're like not major academics or anything. They're historians who are more focused on r activism, racial activism than medievalism, even though they're ostensibly medieval historians. That's what they studied. But if you look at actually what their papers are all about, it's always about completely different stuff, like about race. Um, I can give you an example just of what Mary Ramber and Alm's priorities are before I go into the history of what my involvement in this whole thing since 2019 has been. In 2020, uh, at the University, uh, University of Toronto, she said, dismantling the system means changing the way our field, meaning medieval studies, is structured. And that means essentially burning it down, something that people are not prepared to do because they spend time and money learning Old English, Old Norse, Old Irish, or whatever. Those languages have saved absolutely zero people in our present day. So her uh, metric for valuing historical studies of how it saves, uh, you know, perceived marginalized peoples right now, and presumably any other, you know, inquiries into history are completely useless. They have no utilitarian value within her system. So, well, talking about systems and structures and burning them down, is she a... A Marxist? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, that's Marxist they're, they're type all pretty, They're all Marxist. They're all Marxist. Oh, yeah. Some. They're all, you know, uh, critical race theory types. Dorothy yeah. Kim is extremely, you know, that. I think she. Because I don't a, know these people. I've never. Dor heard Dorothy them. Kim used to run a blog called like Medieval People of Color, which just like trying to portray medieval Europe as being predominantly black and, you know, medieval Europe as being an extremely, you know, multicultural place which it wasn't. She is an American of Chinese descent, I believe. Uh, Mary Ramber and Olm is a North American, possibly Canadian, uh, of mixed racial ancestry. And uh, Eric Wade is, a, is an English guy living in Germany who is, uh, he describes himself as, uh, well, lists various pronouns and letters and uh, then says he's a helicopter parent to a kitty. So that's the kind of people that we're talking about. And... Um, what, they, subversive, spiteful mutants? Like <laughs> that. You could say something like that. They're definitely Have subversive. Have I gone too far? <laughs> I, 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 mean, I don't well, know. I don't, honestly never heard of these people. They are, um, I would call them grifters. Uh, like they're, yeah, they're, right. well, they're, they have, they're using the field of medieval studies as a vehicle for uh, extremist left-wing racial politics. Right, okay. uh, and, and part of that uh, is, as she says, burning it down yeah I mean, she wants to burn down medieval studies her words that's what she said so like when the, they <laughs> present me as a threat to medieval studies in in various sources but bear in mind when they said their objective is to burn it down presumably a threat means someone who doesn't want to burn it down uh, i think that's, that's true <laughs> truly subversive then truly inverted the meaning of words and yeah things. yeah because that's the thing it's just a wider point of what we're talking about here is that we're engaged in some sort of um culture war, some sort of cold war that mm -hmm. the West is up against, a myriad of enemies. Mm -hmm. One of those battlefronts, if you like, mm -hmm. is history, mm -hmm. our heritage. Yes. Uh, the very nature of, of the, the narrative of our own past yes. is under attack yes. in a very real sense. And in the vanguard are people like this, mm -hmm. it seems, that are hell-bent on burning it down, mm. just destroying it, undermining it, mm. uh, f for no other reason than for, well, for its own sake. Because they hate it. Well, they're aiming. Or they're at, resentful about they're it or something. The, Who knows? They're aiming at the root. Or Anglo-Saxons. You might be forgiven for thinking, okay, Anglo-Saxon is just one period of the history of these Isles. It's not so special. Or why? Why does it make such a big difference? But actually, you're missing the point of the significance of Anglo-Saxons in the history of this island, the story of this people, the English people. English people, as an ethnic group, they are an ethnic group. Uh, that ethnic group is first defined and recognized within the Anglo-Saxon period 
and the term English is used interchangeably with Anglo-Saxon, mm. Anglorum, Anglo-Saxorum, uh, uh, Anglish, uh, mm. Anglican. These all mean the same basic thing. They're referring to us or our ancestors who were basically the same as us. Slightly different in some ways, of course. It's a long time ago. But what is this, why does it matter when something so long ago what, to, to identity politics? Well, the reason is, for example, in Japan, does the samurai have any relevance to the salary man? Absolutely. The, although Japanese people don't, aren't samurais anymore, that's part of their heritage and their culture. So it's helped, it defines who they are. The same thing is true for us. We are the Anglo-Saxons of today. The term Anglo-Saxon was used in 2012 by Mitt Romney when he was trying to extend an olive branch to Britain saying, you know, we're of Anglo-Saxon heritage. Not that long ago in history, 2012, mm. but it feels a long time ago because you won't see mm. people talking like that anymore. Mm. Um, that is partly because of the efforts of these kind of activists. They want to simultaneously say that there was no such thing as Anglo-Saxons, but also uh, uh, that, 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 like undermine trying to remove the word from and replace it with other words, or whatever, just to try and like undermine the narrative of continuity in history so that the English people have a connection with the foundation of the, of the English nation, oh, yeah. which uh, it, why are they targeting specifically English people? That you can speculate on, but that is the reason for it. But what a sort of, what a despicable, almost insane aim to have, uh, to try and <laughs> destroy the very concept of somebody else's history. Uh, well, yeah. You mentioned there that, apart from the word, trying to ban the word um, or the phrase. Or within um, academia. Anyway. Uh, within academia, yeah. at least, right, mm. which is just the first step mm. in, a, in sort of, a, yeah. a much more sinister process, I would have thought. Um, yes, I think but so. But where they try and deny that there's such a thing as Anglo Saxons. But surely there's the Angles, the Saxons, the Jutes. Well, I and that I should, they I came over here. here. And that's yeah. a matter of record, though, isn't it? That's well, a matter that, of archaeological wasn't, and literary record, no? In 2019, there was. Um, some questions still about that because although I say like this big genetic stuff's happened in 2015, the really conclusive big papers, there's only been two really decent studies on ancient Anglo-Saxon DNA to, and th which have confirmed what the medieval sources from the likes of B, the Anglo-Saxon yeah, Chronicles say. Mention, yeah, yeah right. they describe and also the Welsh sources as well describe, um, you know, Geoffrey of Monmouth described the invasion of Germanic peoples into the British Isles and they were called the English or the Saxons or whatever. And um, there, that narrative was accepted for most of history, but in the 20th century it became questioned. Uh, and to what extent that it wasn't true isn't just left-wing extremists. There's been a lot of other people besides left-wing extremists who's bringing that narrative into question mm. because they're like, what is the actual evidence on the ground that it occurred? Archaeologically, it's, there's definitely introductions of Germanic material culture, uh, the changes of place names, but they're like, what evidence do we have? But in 2016, there was a small paper, genetic paper, which showed... And there probably was a, a change. But then in 2022, there was a massive paper with like 800 Anglo-Saxon skeletons. And then we can say conclusively, there was a big replacement. Up to 75% of the population of Eastern England was replaced in that time. But this yeah, is before, yeah. back in 2019, when I first sounded the alarm, I was actually, I made a, a, a 16th of October, 2019, um, after Mary Ramber and Alm had um, announced her resignation from the International Society of Anglo-Saxon Studies. Uh, she was trying to get them to change their name because she didn't want them to be called Anglo-Saxon uh, uh, ISAS anymore. And she was subsequently successful, but that was a bit later. But that was a calculated resignation to try and kick up a fuss and get the ball rolling on that. I made a stream in which in the first half of that stream, I criticized not her, but another, another academic who wasn't a left-wing extremist as far I know, as I know, Susan Oosthuizen, who was one of these people who was saying like, an archaeologist saying the material cultural evidence for an Anglo-Saxon invasion isn't sufficient and I don't believe it happened. She's basically saying, I'm, I'm summarizing her views. And then uh, I also bring up like Francis Pryor, who's a British historian who had a documentary once on television in the UK where he argued, oh no, it was, it was a very small migration of enculturation and it was just a migration of English culture without any English people. So we're a still Iron Age cult. So I was just saying, oh, I disagree with them. And then in the second half of the stream, I was like, the more sinister is this Mary Ramber and Alm, who is actually trying to ban the word Anglo-Saxon within academic studies, because that, that would be an extra barrier for people to connect to the, that period, on top of the people who are trying to claim separately that there's no actual reality of an Anglo-Saxon migration. I don't believe that Mary Ramber and Alm made that argument about actual genetic evidence or absence of evidence. She was just, the reasoning that Mary Ramber and Alm and her colleague Eric Wade 
were ju using to justify the ban of the word was actually nothing to do with anything from the Anglo-Saxon period, but rather the argument that subsequently in history it has been used by racists, therefore it shouldn't be allowed to be used. <laughs> and then that's a very tenuous, very, very weak argument. And some people pointed out like, okay, but because they were saying, why don't you use uh, early English instead of Anglo-Saxon? Someone was saying like, what is English Defence League? Not okay by your books because they don't say Anglo-Saxon Defence League. It's, it's a very... Uh, it's, it's, it's so fragile. It's so pathetic, mm, really. Um, mm. I just, yeah, we just shouldn't pay any attention to that sort of nonsense, I think. But it's interesting, like, so the, the very concept that there wasn't really an Anglo-Saxon or a Jutish invasion. I mean, you look at, you mentioned Bede there, mm. um, or the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle itself. And then there's the archaeological evidence of something like Sutton Hoo, mm -hmm. for example. And I get that someone like, but I get that there could still be some question, because you also mentioned... Jeffrey of Monmouth, who's famously untrustworthy. Yeah. A lot of people have said, I think quite rightly, that he made loads of things up. I think he did. Like, well. You're right, yeah. yeah. I mean, Hengist and Horsa may be completely made up by Jeffrey of Monmouth. But anyway. Uh, they're not. I've got okay. loads, loads of okay. sources on the continent. Fair enough. Too, but, yeah. no, fair enough. I think they're gods, but, actually, myself. But, oh, really? Uh, yeah, Anglo-Saxon okay. gods. <laughs> to watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.